Hey guys, I'm Madison Brodsky with 20s and Trending, coming to you backstage at Show Me the Funny with John Heffern. How are you doing tonight? Good. You know what? Uh, I am not 20, and, and I, I've never trended it really? at 20. Because because when I was in my 20s, there wasn't a such thing as trending. So this is the closest I will ever be to trending in my 20s, so I appreciate you have, having me. So what does it mean to you to trend? What does social media mean to you? You know what social media to me means, uh, it's just, it, it, it's, it's a lot of extra work. Like, like back in the day, if you were a comic, you would just perform and then you were done. Right. But now you have, to, you, you have to do all the social media things. And some of it, like I know you have to, but at what point do you not do, you, you know, it's like a weird, I wish there was an age chart. Like I, <laughs> I think I'm too old to periscope. Like I have friends that are my age that periscope and I think you're, you're a grown adult. What, what are you periscoping? Like people who like would be into me all have jobs and they do things. You're not gonna, like, so there's some trends that I, I don't get. So with your age group, yeah. do you think Facebook's the best to reach out to people to try to trend or do you dive into Twitter, Instagram? I like to use Friendster or MySpace. I heard it's very <laughs> okay. popular, right? Are those good? Right. Uh, and then there's an AOL chat room I go to. So way throwback, we're throwing it yeah, back. Yeah, and then uh, so I take these little post-it cards and then I post them in coffee shops, in rest stops around the country. That's how I usually do it. Or right in a bathroom stall. How's that working out for you? Not well. I, I get offered a lot of dates and the, I'm sure the guys seem like very nice, burly men, but uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know, I like, I guess you kind of have to do everything. Like, I kind of like Instagram because it's less work than anything right. else, but then I'm also, you I just can't, can't, smile, right? I can't keep taking pictures of myself and like, because I always think nobody cares, you know? So I have to find like a, like a thing, like a selfie by somebody eating a grilled cheese in just every city I go to. Right, you have to I portray guess. your brand within your social media. Yeah, so I don't know. Okay, so for those of you who are unaware, John is clearly a stand-up comedian. So what did you realize that you had a passion for comedy? I was into stand-up comedy when I was uh, in high school, and then when I got to college, uh, there was a comedy club that you could be 18 to go to, so we would go and we'd sit in the audience, and we'd watch the comics, and then there was a waitress that was gorgeous, so me and my roommates, we just sat in her section the whole time. We didn't care about the comics, we just wanted to, like, we'd walk in, we were like, we, we, want her. So we weren't even old enough to drink, so she, it's not like we tipped her well. Um, and she one time said, hey, when are you guys gonna go on stage and do stand up? And of course, at 18, I was like, I'm probably gonna do it next week, probably. Probably, I could probably, I'd probably destroy it. Whatever. Probably the funniest guy ever walking. Yeah. So, so she came back to our table and said, I signed you guys up. You guys uh, are on the list to perform whenever it was, like next Tuesday night. And that waitress, by the way, was uh, Lucy Liu, um, the actress. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so then, how like, is that whole experience? That must be like very overwhelming well, when you're like well, trying to play it cool and all of a sudden you're signed up to go on stage. Yeah, and then like so we did it to impress her and then she must have graduated from college like a week earlier because like two weeks later she, she wasn't working at the club and then she went on to be Lucy Lou. Right. Um, so without her knowing it, like if I ever saw her, I'd be afraid to talk to her because she completely set my life in the direction that it it ended up going. Like, so what if I saw her and she was like a tool? You know, if she, or she like blew me off or something, I, I, w I would think my whole life was a complete sham. So I kind of hope I never, I never uh, meet her again. Well, Maybe she was just like some weird, you know how sometimes people come in your life and yeah. put you in the right direction and then disappear? Maybe, She's like maybe, your fairy godmother. Maybe almost. she was my spirit animal. I totally believe it. All right. So your first experience on stage so I've heard, was at the University of Michigan's campus Main Street Comedy Showcase. Yeah, that's, right? that's the place that uh, we, which that she was at, and then I got on stage, and I think I had a, a speech class where we had to do like a humorous speech, so the my stand-up set, I just basically did that speech that I had to do in class. So you're 18 years old, you're transitioning into college. Yes. So how is balancing your comedy act and standing up and going for your career while being a full-time student? Well, it w you know what it did for me that uh, in the group of guys that I started comedy with, that became like our fraternity. Like that became the thing, you, like that going to perform, you know, at, 
at a comedy club or hanging out with other comics. That was my going to the fraternity house or going hanging out at some sorority. Like, yeah. So I, my social group became those stand-up comics. And, you know, that's what, what's great about being, you know, since this is trending with your 20s, being that age is because you, you have that. I remember I would have a, like a three o'clock class. I would jump in the car. I would drive three hours, host the show, jump back in the car, make my you know 10 a.m. class, and then at three, jump back in the car and drive that other three hours and do that for like a full week and never once thinking. Now keep in mind, this is pre, like I'm, I gotta stop aging myself, but this is pre cell phone in your car. So like when you drove right. three hours in the car by Tell yourself, you were by yourself. You didn't right. have, you couldn't text anybody. You couldn't read, not that you should text and drive or you should Twitter and drive. You should. Keep your phone in your glove box and stop looking at your phone when you're driving. It's very dangerous. But but I mean, but also back then, you know, us older people say that to you younger folk. But we were equally as dangerous. Like, you know, I'm from the era when you would drive, you'd have a big book of CDs and you would take your eyes off the wheel and just flip through your book of CDs. So that's as bad as as texting or the or it is. Your Twitter feed. So do you think that having all of this going on um, was overwhelming as a student or do you hope that other students that are our age and that are looking right now, do you encourage them to reach out and follow their dreams? Yeah, it's, you can't be overwhelmed at 20 something, you can't. If you are, you're just being lazy. It's impossible because you, you, it's, I don't know what it is, but you need little to no sleep. You can even go pretty long without food. That's and true. as much as you think, if you eat six packets of ramen noodles, during the day, that's not food. There are zero nutrients, there is zero substance in ramen noodles except for that you can eat cardboard, swallow it, and it'll expand in your stomach and you're getting the same nutritional uh, boom than you would from ramen noodles. So, Do you have experience with eating cardboard? It's, it's well, I've eaten many ramen noodles. It's the same exact thing. I, I think I've eaten cardboard before. Maybe. You've never eaten cardboard? I don't think so. I think I, I, did, I think I did a pizza box once. I think I... I, think I mean, when in college, right? Yeah, no, I, I think um, me and my roommates ate a pizza box. I, 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 I've suppressed that memory until just now. All right, but Yeah, well. but, but, but I think, especially at, like, so, and you have so much room to, to mess up in your life in your early 20s. It's unbelievable how many new starts you could do. You could start at the starting line, go a little ways, mess up get kicked back to the starting line, go a little further, get kicked back. You can do that for a long time because you only have, you're only responsible for yourself. So, I mean, who cares? You, you kind of, for the most part, have nothing to begin with. Nothing to maybe, lose. Maybe your parents are rich and you have a bed with a box spring, but not your mattress is on the floor. You right. know, like, and that's all your life. But so, that's why I always said, like, that's why you put off getting married until you figure out yourself. Because listen, young guys, you young guys in your early 20s that are watching this, I want you to look at me. Did you know when you get married, your wife moves in with you? Keep that in mind, fellas. Just keep that in mind. And when she moves in with you, she'll make you get rid of everything you had prior to her. My <laughs> wife made me get rid of my roommate. I miss Rob. Me and Rob had the greatest relationship. And never once did Rob ever jump up onto the couch and stick his toes under my butt because they were cold. I love my wife, people, system? but I miss Rob. Yeah. Yeah. So. Was that part of your process of becoming successful in this industry? It is j just having Rob in your life, having that support system. Yeah, you have that. I mean, I, I did comedy for a while because of the ladies. I mean, that's that's what you, you know. I mean, you're on stage. You're like, hey, look at me, look at me, and then you go. But yeah, it's just you know that and this in just being that age where like not doing well or it not working out never never pops into your brain. Okay, so you've had so many guest appearances so far in your career with other comedians such as Jay Leno, Chase Chelsea Lately, and Craig Kilborn. Are any of them your idols? No. No? Um, they're all, I've done The Tonight Show and, and One Last Comic Standing and all that type of stuff. It's weird, like, I'll do a TV show and it won't affect me at all, like I'll be zero nervous, but then I'll do a random show in the middle of the US on a random night, and for some reason I'll get really nervous. 
So I kind of think of it more as a job. I mean, I admire what a lot of them do. do. Yeah. Do you think that the nerves just kick in randomly, and do they help you? Do they yeah, do you, well? You, the nerves never go away, but you eventually you learn how to like use them for for good and not evil. You know, so I still get, I mean, your, your stomach doing a little bit of flips is either fear or excitement. It's the same, it's your body, your heart rate, your blood, your, your skin tone, everything's doing the same exact thing. Right. So then you eventually just learn to use that to be, get excited about. It's just reconditioning what that feeling is. You know, it's just, you know, classic psych 101, little shaping, conditioning. You reattach the meaning, what it means, and then that way, that way you're not, you're, you're not like failing or doing bad out of fear. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do it because you just go in, you know, guns blazing, but you know. So while we're talking about The Last Comic Standing, how was that show? How was that experience? Uh, it was great. It was uh, my season. I, I'll say to this day is the best season. Uh, we had about 13 million viewers, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, people watched it. Um, great comics. It was the first like major television that I did, so that was the thing that definitely, you know, uh, got me noticed back then, yeah. And your career has blossomed since then. You're one of the only veteran, or comedians, I should say, that has had two specials on Comedy Central. Yes. And you actually have a third one coming out? I have uh, three I've actually done, get ready to do my fourth. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. that's not, uh, that's good research on your part. Bad that I don't update my bios ever. So, okay. they know that. that was all on me. But yeah, I'm getting ready to shoot my fourth. Um, hopefully, I don't know, there's, there's so much. Because now there's so many different places you could do a special. Right. Like, you can, Comedy Central used to be like where you'd want to go. But then, you know, you can go, I'd just rather it be on Netflix. Or I'd mm -hmm. rather it be on this and that, or Amazon, or whatever, because you can tell people. Like when yeah. it's on Comedy Central, they never tell you when it's on. So I can't go, hey everybody, I'm on Wednesday at, at eight. It's just randomly on, so. Well, is there anything that we can look forward to in your next special? Um, well, I'll be in it, so that's good. That's always a plus. Right, and you said that you're, you're gonna be shot out of a cannon, right, oh, for yeah. the beginning of it? Definitely. So she'll be that, she'll do that. Uh, the guy behind uh, the camera, do you ever get to get in front of the camera? Uh, I do actually. He's do. Uh, he's gonna put together a uh, boy band type dance, and he's gonna do it in the very beginning. So we got a. So big, there's a lot. To we got a lot. Too. You guys are really gonna be pulling a lot of this special. It's yeah. a treat. It's gonna be good. Getting it's gonna be excited. Good. I think just we, we got to get our rehearsal space going, and then uh, we'll do this. So where do you get all of your inspiration? Um. Usually on stage, I, I write when I'm on stage and just something pops in my kids. I, I have two conversations going on, the one that's coming out of my mouth and then the one that I'm thinking about in my head. And sometimes they're right together, other times they're completely off track where I can be talking about something and then in my brain I'm just thinking, is there an Arby's around here? Like, I hope there's an Arby's. That's open. Always about food. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but, you know, or man, I hope the restaurant at the hotel is open when I get done. So. And then I have to stop and go ask the audience, what was I saying? I don't even... So what is the secret to being funny? How are you funny? I don't know. I ask myself that daily. I don't even know if I believe it. So it's, um, I, I think being uh, relatable is probably, I think people like people like them. Mm -hmm. So when they see something relatable or uh, a shared experience, um, there's usually humor in that. I mean, that's the type of humor I do. So speaking of shared experiences, you're actually here in Tucson to perform for a charitable show called mm -hmm. Show Me the Funny, where we are matching your talents mm -hmm. with a very sad cause, such as domestic violence. Why did you decide to do a show? Um, I like using my uh, my dumb little talents for good every mm -hmm. once in a while, you know what I mean? Yeah. For, for the most part, they're, they're used on just happy drunk people. Every once in a while, you can do things that People will spend money, that they'll see a great night of entertainment, and then that money then gets used to help people who, you know, who have some difficult situations going on. So, why not, right? And what can we look forward to tonight? Um, I don't know, what, what can you look forward to? I, I've been home um, for the last couple weeks and I haven't thought about comedy at all. So I'm wow. just as curious on what's gonna happen tonight as uh, the people here would be. 
you have anything prepared? Anything planned? I never, I, I, I know kind of what I want to talk about, but I'm a slow starter. So okay. after about a minute or so, it'll come to me on stage, but I, I never have a beginning or an end. That way I'm never in a rush to, uh, to get a place. Makes sense. Okay, so trick. very last question. As you know, this is uh, 20s and trending. Yes. So how do you plan on trending in your future career? Um, well, I will have you know this, for all you people listening, uh, I wrote an R&B uh, song. You did? I wrote an R&B song, so here's it. We put you on the spot right now? It, it's, I didn't sing it. I had somebody sing it. But it's a very, it's a big knock in the boots, old school R&B song. So I probably, I would imagine, um, by this time next year, I'm probably touring with Rihanna, or you know Taylor Swift probably, or uh, Jennifer Lopez. It makes probably, sense. I'll They're be, all R and B artists. I'll, I'll probably, yeah, I didn't <laughs> even say one R and B artist. <laughs> I, um, I'll, I'll probably, you know, be writing most of their songs. Probably right. get in sync back together. That would be That's great. That's my second we all boy band NSYNC. reference in one uh, interview, by the way. Two. I made two. I NSYNC. think we're on a trend here. Yeah. So that's probably, so everyone should check out my song, uh, Date Night. Check it out on iTunes. All right. I'm not kidding you. I wrote an R&B song. Well, thank you so much. This is John Heffern here with 20s and Trending. We will see you later.